One of the most interesting of my new colleagues was Dr. Joseph Grubko, who had been presenter in charge of music at the college since his arrival in 1935. Dr. Grubko was to stay a little more than a year after my arrival, having completed nearly 40 years of service to the college, and I'm talking to him today. Dr. Grubko, what were your first memories of the college when you came here in 1935? A very small uh, place compared with the school where I had been in England. Um, How many pupils were there? Uh, there was something like 70, I think, at the most. Perhaps it was even less than that. All boys. And uh, I remember being uh, fascinated by the organ which I had to play in the chapel, uh, worked by uh, water power. You, switch, you pull, pull out a plug, it's quicker, quicker than starting many an uh, uh, electric motor. And it went psh, boom, psh, boom. The whole time you were playing, noisy but <laughs> efficient. Um, oh, d delightful memories! Um, Funny little house where I lived, no longer there. Uh, where was it? On the uh, it was a, on the green grass just above what is now the founders' building. In fact, I, I inhabited that while the founders' building was being built and gave music lessons in my sitting room, but it was very noisy. Was it only music that you were responsible for when you came? Ah, uh, Warden Sobey, who appointed me, um, requested me to teach, or ordered me to teach mathematics to intermediate certificate class. And uh, since I'd studied classics as well as music at Oxford and hadn't done any mathematics for quite some long time, this was rather a, a dangerous thing to do. I remember going to Dr. Willis for coaching in the subject and getting, as it were, a sum or two ahead uh, all through the year until I came to the theory of indices. I remember the theory of indices fascinated me so much that I stuck, out, stuck on that for about six weeks until the boys said to me, aren't there some other things in the course we have to do? Uh, I think I may have a record there that not a single one passed maths in the intermediate that year. <laughs> uh, and also, of course, I didn't teach maths anymore. So what, what else did you do? I mean, what did you do apart from music and the I had to, mathematics? Um, I think it was understood that I was not an athletic person. Therefore, I was asked to run with the boys sometimes over fields. Remember Michael Yates, who came as a boy, the same term that I came as a member of the staff, he didn't like running, and uh, so he was always in the uh, rear guard, and uh, in sheer kindness, I ran along with Michael Yates, I remember, the poet's son. Yes. And um, did quite a lot of, ra well, <laughs> meandering over the fields there. Also, of course, um, at some point there were scouts. They didn't last long, fortunately. Uh, how did you come to be involved in them? Uh, could I say first how the scouts arose? Uh, the warden, Warden Sobey, called up two members of the staff and said, um, I've decided we should have a scout troop here. You will be scout master and you'll be assistant scout master. Organize that. That was the first they'd ever heard of it. And um, it got going and eventually I was asked to be an acting assistant scout master. And how many of the boys would have been in the scouts? Oh, quite a lot of the school, both old and young. It was still quite a small school, and it was totally absurd, completely out of place, and uh, uh, there was a terrible lot of bad language. Remember, Baden-Powell had that rule that if you were caught using bad language on a parade, you had a cup of cold water poured down your sleeve. And did you do that? Oh, we had a bucket there, 
I'd used it always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what else did you do in the Scouts? Did you go on camps and hikes and uh, that sort of thing? I think I was in one camp only for a weekend at Powers Court uh, before the, the troop was disbanded, much to the relief of the scouting movement in, in Ireland, as somebody told me afterwards, a big high up man. Was it just the bad language? Um, it was a general stupidity of the thing that we were not keen. We, we had no interest in the scouting movement. I mean, you couldn't, starting that way, could you, by order of warden. You've been master, scoutmaster. You've been assistant scoutmaster. Organised. And w were you as um, unkeen as it were? Oh yes. The boys. Um, some of the boys were keen. I remember lying in my tent in Powers Court for that weekend. Uh, it rained all the time, and um, the chief scout, as we called him, the I don't know what he was called, scout leader or something, a boy called Ferguson. He's dead now. Uh, said, "Don't you worry. I'll bring you sausages." And he kept on doing that, and I think I stayed in my tent and read all the time, and. Eventually, the weekend came to an end. No, no, it was, it was, it was silly. We wore, we wore kilts. kilts. I think we, we may have been the only... Yes. Why was that? Um, Warden Sobey decided that uh, we were very Irish, <laughs> and uh, more Irish. He wanted to make us appear more Irish than any other Irish school, you see. Green kilts, yards and yards of cloth. What was it like? Was this your only experience of wearing a kilt? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, how, did, how did the boys take to it? Well, they just they hated it. Yes. I mean, it's just a, a, a silly memory of what shouldn't really have ever been allowed to occur. Well, what, given that it was such a small school, yes. how did you, apart from singing in chapel, organise musical activity? Uh, For example, entertainments, uh, plays, there, or there, musicals? There, 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 were, there was not very much musical activity, looking back on it. Um, oh, a certain amount of, I remember a certain amount of informal uh, madrigal singing when I got some keen voices that were interested to do that sort of thing. Um, school concerts, we bravely put on a few concerts with a uh, small choir that it must have been, all boys. Oh, a few staff sang tenor on a bass. Um, I don't know, we, 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 we ha oh, I had uh, some piano pupils, of course, some organ pupils. Um, there was one violin pupil for many years, and that was about all for many years, and then later with more boys and a little more, more talent, we began to get a few more things. We even managed a small orchestra. Uh, that has all come on, I'm sure, since I, I left, and uh, has developed marvelously, I'm sure. It didn't develop very much for me. Tell me, when you were here first, you were a bachelor. Yes. Um, does, did that mean that much of your social life revolved uh, around the college and what was it yeah. like to be um, a master presumably there were a lot of um, unmarried um, uh, masters th in there the was college. one one married one George Lodge he was the only uh, Roman Catholic he was the only married one and he used to go away back to his home in San Demont every evening um, I wanted to get married having met a, a lady from Belfast and um, I had found I had to request permission, not just from the warden, but from the, the fellows. And they had, a, no doubt, an extraordinary meeting. And uh, I, th I don't know whether it was reluctant. Anyway, they gave permission. Uh, my salary, which had been, of course, we know the value of money has changed, don't we? But had been originally 150 pounds per annum. It's funny, isn't it? Uh, plus, of course, board and lodging and free medical attention and free laundry. Yes. Uh, they, they nobly increased that, I think, by 20 pounds. I think it was 20 pounds. And uh, enabled me to get married. And uh, they were immediately able to use the two rooms which I then had at that, uh, then by that time in the house, I don't know what it's called, garden house or something, down the, yes, the garden house. on the right, uh, and make dormitories getting in immediately six more boys, no doubt with some uh, financial profit. Um, so you moved out when you got married? Oh yes, oh yes, to, to a house in, in uh, oh, uh, near, near, near uh, Kilturnan. Well, what, what was, yes. before you got married, what was life like for, I, I, I want, I'd like to get some kind of idea of what life was like for the, for the, the masters living in. It must have been 
a slightly monastic type of it community. Was. All these uh, young, uh, well, yeah. perhaps young and older, yes, unmarried yes. men. Yes, what, what, what was it like? It was simple. <laughs> you ate together? We ate together. In the common room? Yes. The only meal we didn't eat in the common room was uh, Sunday breakfast, which was rather formal and uh, in a way rather not quite so pleasant as eating in the common room. It sort of had to be on one's best behavior because the warden and his wife were there. Yes, that survived up to my time, that, that Sunday breakfast. Did it? Uh, how many of you would have there have been eating together in the evenings? How many it would have been on the staff there? <sighs> <coughs> I have in mind something like six, hmm. seven perhaps. Was the atmosphere good among the staff? Was there? Was oh yes. Trending? Oh yes. Oh yes. There were some delightful people, like old Southgate, chief classics. Oh yes, there were some delightful people. There were some funny people too. They came gradually. And as the school got bigger under Warden Sobey, the staff expanded. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yes, considerably. What, what what about Warden Sobey? We've heard um, very good things and very bad things about him. What was your mm. assessment of him, having worked under him for five, four yes, years? I felt, well, first of all, I felt personally very grateful that he gave me my first job. Um, it was curious. I, I, I was, uh, uh, this is a slight diversion, but never mind. I was uh, at Oxford. I realized I had to get a job very quickly. And uh, Gabitas and Thring, the scholastic agents, sent me a list of schools. And um, I saw in the list St. Columbus College, Beth Farnham, County Dublin, and um, headmaster C.W. Sobey. And I recalled that I had known him, but slightly, when he had been a, a teacher at the school where I had been in, in um, the edge of Oxford, St. Edward's School. And I wrote, and I was rather delighted when he said, come as presenter. Um, now, I, I found him, oh, friendly. But later on, I found uh, I didn't altogether get on with him. Perhaps I'm somebody who wouldn't altogether get on with any warden. I don't know. Uh, why why I, was I, that? What did you know? Why, why did you not get on? Hard to put one's finger on it. No definite memories of anything particular. Um, the little um, formal quarrels from time to time, like the first uh, Muslim boy that came here. And uh, I think you'd be interested in this. This is a very fu funny story. Um, the, this boy, Kazaruni, came from Tehran or Isfahan or somewhere. And he came unable to speak more than a few words of English with his uh, governor, uh, not just a um, guardian who was, a, I think, a businessman in London. And uh, I met them walking around with Warden Sobey, and uh, Warden Sobey introduced me and said, walk around with us. And, uh, and then I heard this uh, guardian ask Warden Sobey, uh, now, will there be a special place for this boy to say his prayers? Uh, and he spoke about the times when the prayers should be said. And I heard Warden Sobey promise that there would be a special place. Now, the boy picked up English very quickly. He also learned piano with me after a fashion. And at one piano lesson, I said to him, have you a special place for your prayers? And he said, no, no place, no prayers. Uh, I got it quite clear that this was, he understood what I meant, and this was his reply. So I went to Warden Sophie, and I said, what about the promise that I heard you make to that boy's guardian, which made Sophie very, very angry. I think at that occasion, he used two of his three signs of rage they were banging the door backwards and forwards, throwing a pile of books on the floor, and uh, I forget what the other one was, but they, they, they moved. <laughs> he was very, very angry and said, I'll look into that. And now there had been in the Kennedy building, every room uh, had a piano in it, except one, and it was built <laughs> rather badly so that um, you could not, but by any uh, upping, rounding, turning, get a piano into that room. So I used it, very conveniently, as a kind of storeroom. Well, there was a, a spare key, I suppose, in the bursar's office. And when I went next to the Kennedy building, I found Kazaruni turning out all my things from that room. And uh, I said, what are you doing? He said, it is my place for, for my prayers. 
I couldn't say anything, could I? <laughs> but, no, no, Is this I, the warden's I, vengeance? I beg your pardon? Is this the warden's vengeance? Yes. Like giving giving oh, him oh, what yeah. oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, no, there, there were other things. Looking back on it, I wouldn't say that... Um, that, that, I, if, if, that eventually I would say that I, I didn't like him so well as I did at the beginning. Let's put it that way. Hard to put uh, exact reasons on it. And I do know that it must be said that he built up the college. He did it by every way possible. Enormous amount of indirect advertising. There couldn't be direct advertising because of headmaster's conference yes. links and so on. And uh, I think probably he was a successful warden. Well, you're getting back to yourself. When you moved out uh, yes. on your marriage, did, did you find that you spent less time in the college or that you still spent uh, huh. a lot of time here? I think I had to come... Um, of course, there were the, the many services I um, had to play for. Uh, two a day? Oh, two a day, yes, yes. Oh, yes, it was, it was two a day regularly for, for years. And on Sunday, it was sometimes three starting with one at eight. Um, also had to come here uh, at certain periods to take prep in the evening in the schoolroom. All the school doing their prep in the schoolroom. I suppose that doesn't happen now? No. It was there a sort of duty roster? And you there was duty roster. Yes. Uh, I remember what other duties did you have of that kind? Uh, master on duty, yes. It's awfully hard now to, to remember. Uh, had to take a take roll, call a roll at yes. certain times. Um, dish out um, sausages or whatever they were, evening meal, yes. in the dining hall. Um, generally, reprimand the boys and send them to their housemasters to be beaten for almost every trivial offence. What did you think of that? I mean, of corporal punishment. Were you aware oh, of it being... I'd been used to it at, at the school where I was, and uh, I accepted it as a, as a norm here, but there was far too much of it. Was there? Uh, oh, there was far too much of it. Uh, some boys it, kept a diary because you weren't allowed to be beaten more than once a day. And I remember the one boy called Foley who um, was uh, reprimanded by Mr. Southgate for some offence and uh, I shall have to beat you, Foley, he said. Uh, uh, what's the first day you could manage? So Foley looked at his diary. He said, well, I'm, I'm being beaten by Mr. So-and-so tomorrow, by Mr. So-and-so the day after. And the warden's beating me. The, uh, I think I can manage uh, Friday. Right, then come to me Friday night at 7.30, Foley. Well, Friday night at 7.30, Foley came along, knocked on the Southgate's door. Southgate had forgotten all about it. <laughs> and, and that must be one of the times when beating didn't occur. Oh, good evening, Foley. How nice to see you. Would you like a cup of tea? And the, the beating was forgotten. But that's, that's um, an exception. Did, did you ever beat it. anyone yourself? No, I, uh, that, that had stopped uh, just before I came, except for a warden and housemasters. And did that, prefects were, beat at that time? Because they did later. <laughs> Then I suppose head head of school probably did. Mm. Yeah, I think so. But not as much as the head head of school at, at St. Edward's did. What, what, what were the, again, mm. coinciding with the time of your marriage, uh, about the late 30s, the war came. Yes. What are, what are your memories of how the war affected uh, life in the college and indeed your own routine? Uh, well, um, restrictions, of course. Um, I suppose there was a certain amount of rationing. Of course there was, wasn't there? Uh, life was simpler. I think we all tried to do something to help on the college farm. Um, what was it on the college farm? Was it cattle, pigs, poultry, and um, vegetables, and all that sort of thing? Plenty of vegetables. Mm -hmm. And yes, a certain amount of, 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 um, of poultry, I think, and a certain amount of, um, of livestock, various kinds. Sure, there were pigs. There were certainly cows. Um, oh yes. And did you work on the farm yourself? I mean, do, I don't think I don't think I did. No, I don't think so. I can't oh, remember. It. Yes. Um, d tell me, getting back to the lighter side of it, you, you talked a little bit about some of the entertainments. What about? Could you say something about the musicals that huh. you wrote? That, yes, that I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you how those started. Uh, it came. Quite early on in my start, in my career here, um, it came to near the end of a term. And um, uh, Warden Sobey said to me one day, well, is there something laid on for the last night of term? I said, I don't know. Why don't you know? I said, uh, is it something to do with me? 
Well, he said, I should have thought you'd be interested to have something. Uh, I said, I didn't know that I was supposed to do that. Uh, as from now, he said, you are master in charge of entertainments. So, uh, and you'll get something for the last night of time. But I, the, the time was short, and I remember <coughs> I decided I would write a musical. This was two or three weeks before the end of term, and I remember going down to seek peace and quiet in Fuller's Cafe in, in Grafton Street with a very small amount of expenditure. I sat on a comfortable seat there and wrote my musical. <laughs> Funny place to choose. <laughs> I wanted to get right outside this place. And, um, and how long would it have been, eight, the musical? It was, a, it was pro probably about, about half an hour or 40 minutes. It was called The Headmistress. And uh, it actually, it was quite good. It, it, was, it was actually very funny. Um, and it went down very well. But and many, and many would have been involved in it. Oh, boys. there were three chief characters, and there was a, a chorus of schoolgirls. Now remember, it was only a boys' school, mm -hmm. so uh, when I had the quite big, big boys dressed in any sort of gym frocks that they could manage to get into, <laughs> pretending to be school, little schoolgirls, it was it it was bound to be funny. You see, and then I, I, I this went well, and uh, I was sort of it was expected that I would write more, and I did. I think I wrote about seven altogether. Uh, Jack and Jill and the Drainpipe, I think, was most successful. I adapted that for, uh, um, for some children in the BBC Northern Ireland, and they did that about three times in succession. Well, one of your musicals um, plays a prominent, prominent part in um, Michael Campbell's Lord Dismiss uh, Us. What, what one was that? And, and was it all true, that, that the way he, he wrote about it in that book? <laughs> well, Michael Campbell, I remember, had taken a part in... I think it was one that I'd called Broadgates, but that doesn't matter. If, if, if it wasn't that one, it was another one. And uh, he'd, uh, Michael Campbell, we got on very well here, and uh, he, was, he was very good in taking part in this. He couldn't sing very much, but he did his best. Uh, he went and evidently remembered a lot of that. I don't think much of this was written down, unless he'd kept a script, I don't know. But when he, he wrote, wrote uh, Lord Dismissus, without any permission from me, even being asked for, uh, he quoted an awful lot of that one. I think it was Broadgates. Um, yes, I, I, I thought that was rather bad at the time, but I suppose it, it's all right. It was the, it, the only one that was published. What, 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 what did you think of the book as a whole, as a portrayal of the college? Horrible. Horrible. Uh, there were some, some characters that were, um, I would have thought, uh, easier to detect, uh, you know, the, the originals than, than, uh, than mine, whoever I was called. <laughs> but um, th there was one in particular that was a thinly disguised um, English teacher. Oh, it was somebody who finally uh, committed suicide by laying uh, his head on the railway line somewhere. This, the school, was, of course, was it's set in England. Yes. Uh, this was, uh, uh, this was uh, obviously founded on an English teacher who had, in fact, fallen on the London underground, and nobody knew whether it was suicide or not. But it was a very unpleasant book, extremely unpleasant. It made insinuations about, shall we say, the um, sexuality of one kind or another of various people. And mm. It was unjustified, I think. Right. Moving on uh, through the years now, um, Warden Argyle mm. came to the college in 1949. How much did things change when the, with, with the change of your first change mm. of warden? It's hard to remember. I, I don't think it was any sudden change. Did he appear as a very new broom when he when he came at first? I suppose he, uh, I suppose every every incoming warden, I suppose would would so appear. I don't remember as being spectacularly new broomish, but um, I think he went down well, and uh, I would imagine that we all liked him. I know I did, and he sort of got on very well and. At, at that time, were you um, beginning to diversify your activities between the college huh. and Trinity College? Yes, I, I got interested. I, would, I was doing various other things. Uh, that's right. I'd started 
uh, ooh, quite a long time ago to um, to conduct the Choral Society in Trinity, and um, and then I was doing quite a lot of um, <laughs> teaching of harmony and counterpoint correspondence courses with various people, and then later a sort of uh, unofficial um, class in Trinity before there was a proper regular school of music there. Um, and let me think. I also had a job for a few years uh, with Forrest Aaron, which necessitated uh, traveling around uh, Ireland for two or three days a week. And I had um, a permission from Ward Nagahel to do that. And um, uh, I think David Fitzgerald, no longer alive, was um, assisting me then and keeping the ball rolling here. Um, How did you find that um, existence, as it were, very much involved in what was going on here, but also very active outside the yeah. college? Did, did it work well, do you think, for you? I think so. Yes. I think. I, I would look back <coughs> and say it worked well. Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. Oh, yes. Yes. What, what were the, the music pupils inside and outside the college that you particularly remember? Ha. Huh. I think I was enormously lucky. I don't think any teacher could ever be so lucky as I was. In, uh, let's think, it must have been about the first year I was married, when we lived over at Ballycorus near Kilturnan. And um, so that was only a very few years since I came here, that I met young John Beckett mm -hmm. from Aravon, I think. And he at once struck me as being ex extraordinary, outstanding young musician. And uh, I remember he first, he, when he first arrived, he, he revealed to me rather shyly that he had written 24 preludes for piano, like Chopin, <laughs> and uh, a few sonatas for violin and piano, and uh, lots of songs and so on. He hasn't developed as a composer, but he has developed in other ways. Before he left me, he was a very good pianist, uh, pretty good organist, and uh, very, very knowledgeable about music itself. And of course, he's had a, a, a splendid career. Yes. Any singers? Did any singers pass through? Ah, or interesting. That point. Um, I remember some good, good voices in the choir. I can't remember any who developed as singers afterwards. No, I don't think so. No. Uh, organists. Yes. David Lee. Yes. Who later became organist of Kilkenny Cathedral, St. Bartholomew's Church, is now t teaching organ in the academy. Um, David Fitzgerald, <laughs> who also became organist of Kilkenny Cathedral, dead now. Um, a fellow called McKinney, who came from Ballymena or somewhere, I can't remember where. Lisburn, Lisburn. Uh, and uh, he was a very good pianist, I remember, and organist. Oh, but which of your colleagues at that time, and indeed in your yes. years here, were you closest to? Who, who do you have the fondest memories of? Interesting you should ask me that. Um, it's an awful thing to say. It would suggest that I'm a very unfriendly person. Uh, not particularly anybody. Possibly Mark Mortimer. With, uh, looking back at it, though I, I have been bad, I have not kept up with him since he... Settled he in, lives Paris. in Paris. Now, yes, no. in the last but year. possibly Mark Mortimer. And when um, the, the, the end of Warden Argyle's reign came about in um, 1974, yes, um, it was what it. Uh, could, could you tell us the, the circumstances of, of your own um, leaving the college staff finally? I found uh, Gibbs a completely different sort of person. He was very, he struck me as being very authoritarian. And uh, that may be good for a headmaster to be authoritarian, but I thought he overdid it. Um, right away from the very first day, he was, uh, as it were, wielding a, if not an iron rod, a certainly a, 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 a cane with, um, this, shall we say, with generosity. Uh, I got the impression that he was, uh, uh, well, more than I would have thought wise, concerned with discipline in the simple sense, 
And again, that may be a good thing that a new warden should be concerned with discipline. But I think he overdid it. Um, I didn't like the way he treated uh, boys who, after all, are human beings. I seem to remember him saying to me once that it was more important that they should obey instructions than uh, uh, think or feel anything particularly. Uh, that was the, the keynote. I've got the impression that the, his keynote was uh, let them obey instructions. Now, uh, th that has said what I felt about Wharton Gibbs. Um, I, d I didn't like, uh, I didn't feel at ease with him at all, right from the word go. And uh, there were various things that made me decide that I would get out. And uh, <laughs> I remember writing a letter of resignation and receiving a reply within, what, certainly within an hour. How, how did you feel about leaving the college, apart from your feelings oh, about the warden? I, I was giving up a small salary, um, facing an uncertain future, uh, but curiously, within, I think, a couple of days, two or three things had happened. Uh, one was that circumstance, quite um, circumstance, providentially, um, Trinity, where I'd been doing something um, rather part-time in their newly formed School of Music, offered me a slightly bigger salary. And also, I had um, had the forethought to apply for an organist ship, too, in fact. And I think in the same day, both churches said uh, they would like to have me. So I had to go to one. I went to Sanford, which treated me very well. And uh, I think I had, I don't know what it was, 12 or 15 years there or something. I can't remember how long it is since I left. You told me, and I've forgotten. It's about 16 years now. Oh, I see. Well, then, then, um, I think it was about 12 years organist at Sanford Parish Church. Yes. Tell me, one, as you'll have seen from the college the, today, even w walking through it to, to, for this interview, you'll have seen the number of girls that there are now. You were recalling earlier the arrival of yes. the girls and the first four of girls. So four tell, us a, tell us about that. From the point of view of a member of staff, how, what, what was it like? experiencing this big change, this revolution? I think it was splendid. I think, we, I think most people, possibly, possibly Dr. Willis was a bit uh, perhaps apprehensive. I, I, I wouldn't know. But uh, I think most of us probably welcomed it. I know it, it seemed to me to be absolutely splendid. I mean, this bit of fresh life. Uh, the boys, the senior boys, loved it, of course. And uh, I mean, they they reveled in this. <laughs> How not? Uh, the girls. Um, it's funny looking back at it. I think they were a bit overawed at first. Four of them, you see, only four. The boys carried their books and opened doors and generally were frightfully respectful. I don't suppose that lingers, does it? What did the staff feel? I mean, what did the staff yeah. think? Were they well, you see the having them in their classes and so on? Yes, they were in <coughs> the... I think they were all in the sixth, upper sixth? Yes, at that time. I think so. Here. So, um, well, they fitted in. I don't think there was any special uh, sort of um, respect paid to them or anything. I don't think so. They just... They were there. We accepted it. I think, I think looking back on it, it was splendid. You'd approve wholeheartedly of the oh, yes. co-education. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Education. Having sent my first family of five to single-sex schools, my next family of two, uh, they both went to um, uh, New Park. Uh, it's boys and girls, and uh, I, th I think they're none the worse for that, and perhaps the better for it. But, of course, St. Columbus could now offer the same services. Indeed. What are your happiest memories, Dr. Kuko, of the college and of your long association with it? Organ playing, um, choir when it went well, and those musicals which I used to revel in. I, I can remember just enjoying those so hugely. 
one time when I was working at Bach B minor Mass down in Trinity, and the very same day, perhaps, taking a rehearsal of my own trivial, flippant music up here. Oh, they were very happy days. And what would you like best to be remembered for? It's awfully hard to say. I think I would like to be remembered as uh, having become more and more uh, delighted with privilege of teaching, which I'm still doing. I hope I'll do it till I die. Uh, I think I would like to be remembered by pupils whom I managed to help. And I know I did manage to help some individual pupils. I'd like to be remembered for that, really. Dr. Gooker, thank you very much. Thank you.